Everything is loaded up. I have the pressure cooker running. And just as usual, I'll run it for 15 minutes and then turn it off and we'll walk away. We're now ready to inoculate these jars of liquid culture. You see that the uh, liquid inside has colored a bit, a little more uh, slight caramelization. And if I swirl it around, you can see that the yeast that settled to the bottom kind of mixes up, but we don't need to swirl that yet. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll call my hands up. Now, if you notice that one of the things I've changed in this room is that this table now is a, a stainless steel table and I'm not using the panel of glass anymore because um, this is not a good surface to work off of. Uh, it is higher, uh, so I have to get a chair to, uh, that's a bit higher if I want to do sit down work, but for the most part, most of the work I do in here, I, I stand up anyhow, especially when I inoculate uh, bags of grain or bags of uh, sawdust. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is clean up this uh, leftover jar of liquid culture of King Oyster that I made September 19th, about four months ago. And to do that, I'll take some of my alcohol, 90%. Draw it up into a syringe. And I'll squirt half a syringe under the, the rim of the lid there and turn it around and get another half of the syringe up there. That'll sanitize anything that's collected underneath that you're really not going to be able to get with this uh, paper towel and alcohol. Wipe my hands again. Get the top of the filter nice and uh, soak with alcohol and then you see I kind of make it a, a kind of position with my fingers where I push the towel up into the rim here and into this rim part right here and over the top into this little notch between the filter and the, the jar lid. Um, so you know that these uh, filters you can buy on fungi.com they're great I've used them Oh, I don't know, probably a hundred times now. And you can see it's kind of rusted and stained, but still all right. And there is a, uh, a regular jar lid underneath these filters with three quarter inch holes drilled through it. And uh, make sure when you drill those holes that the, uh, the barbs of the metal, uh, either to burr those off so they don't cut through the filter or uh, flip it upside down so the bars are, the, the burrs are pointing downward into the jar. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean the top portion of this jar and then I'm going to kind of work around it into the next notch in it there and make sure I get all the nooks and crannies of the texture around it and the bottom and where it was sitting all like sanitized. Now obviously you notice that this isopropyl alcohol wiped off the, uh, the label and date that I had with the permanent marker on this jar so make sure that uh, you remember uh, what you're using, you know, either write it down or be a, have a good mental memory of it. Um, that way you can keep track. You don't want you don't want to mix things up because I've done that before and then uh, yeah, it's a big hassle down the road. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the foil off these. And give each one a good turn to the top. Make sure your position of your hands are always behind the jar and you're always getting as, as little close to the point where it connects as possible. Then put that right up next to the airflow. Now I do about four jars at a time and they can be tight so uh, be careful when you open it that you don't throw it around and never squeeze a jar really tight in one spot. Always make sure you got a good full grip to it because if there's a hairline crack that you maybe missed or something, it is possible to break that jar and cut yourself. Uh, cutting yourself is one of the most common injuries to the mushroom business. 
because there is a lot of glass and things that can break involved. But uh, just be careful. I'll always check your jar is for any chips, cracks, uh, any signs of uh, weakness to the jar. If you see anything like that, throw it out. So I'm going to go ahead and lid off this. Now, over here, you can see I have a little rack set up that I use for petri dishes and whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and set this uh, jar lid on top of that rack because I'm going to uh, maybe have a little bit left over just in case. But if it, if it was a, a full jar of liquid culture, I would definitely uh, put the lid in a, a clean area of the lab table just so uh, I can put it back on and not worry about any contamination getting back into the uh, culture when I put it back in the fridge. So I'm going to just be very careful and pour a small amount into each jar. Now, of course, I'm left-handed, so you might want to uh, flip your position. You see, I just move the jar out to the side to the next one. Always keep your hands behind what you're working with so that the clean air flow is always in front. Make sure you have a good, good, good screw down on that. You want to be pretty good at pouring the culture so that it doesn't uh, run down the outside of the jar, make a mess. And if you end up with a little bit of liquid on the rim, like you see right here, there's already liquid on it, that's no problem. You just screw the jar right back on top of it, or the lid right back on top of it, and uh, it'll dry out in the fridge and not cause a problem. Notice too that I'm making sure that I'm keeping the jar that I'm pouring from well below the top of the uh, filter so it has uh, plenty, plenty of room for the clean air to get in. Now that I got these jars, I, I really don't need to put it on the magnetic mixer at this point just because it only needs a, it's a tiny swirl just to distribute the liquid culture in there a little bit and that'll be enough. Get a little bit of swirl. And uh, if you see any old writing on your jar, go ahead and wipe those off. Although you usually get old permanent marker off, you have to use denatured alcohol because isopropyl isn't, just isn't effective enough. You can see it's not really doing anything. So when I get these towards the fridge, I'll just clean them off with denatured and write the label on it. But make sure to label these with the proper culture and the proper date. These all be king oysters. And in about, oh, two weeks, you'll see a good bat amount of growth coming off the bottom. And then that's when we'll run the mix again. Now they're redistributed. It. And uh, you don't want to let it go to the point like you see in the fridge where you have this large mat of mycelium colonizing the top. That's usually a sign that your liquid culture is getting a bit too over colonized. So you better put it in the fridge at that point if you see that. Uh, why you have it uh, growing outside the fridge. But uh, just even that little mount there with that floating in there, as long as it doesn't dry out, it'll stay good. Go ahead and put the lid back on. And as long as you don't get this filter wet, like you know, accidentally tip the jar up, you'll never have a contamination problem that'll get down here um, until the mycelium just you know dies of old age and. Uh, runs out of food. Like I said, about six months is uh, when you want to always refresh something. But I, I don't really know how long it would last like that, as long as it's looking at Maybe a year, maybe a year and a half. Uh, somebody out there I'm sure has done an experiment. But uh, that'll wrap it up for this episode of Mushroom Adventures. I hope you've liked this improved uh, lab that I got. And so good technique using the magnetic stir bars and I'll see you again on Mushroom Adventures.